Bonjour, mes amis. Welcome back to Valiant Hearts. For those of you guys who did not pick up on it last time and are expecting Half-Life, we are going to be marathoning this game throughout November to get it done while we um, while we remember the uh, end of World War One. So we'll get back to the other games I've been playing pretty soon. It's not a long game, so we'll take a couple of weeks off to play this. Uh, you guys who don't want to watch this, come back. Once we're done with this, okie doke. Anyway, yeah, we have this digging segment now with these active um, shells here that we need to watch out for. I managed to get to this thingamajigger here. It's a compass. Soldiers used compasses to gain their bearings in open countryside. They were used in conjunction with the HQ map. Orienteering was the reserve of officers and non-commissioned officers who issued soldiers with directions. Cool. And I just learned this week that apparently some compasses are called, uh, I believe, whiskey compasses because they are actually filled with alcohol, which somehow helps with the spinning of the dial. I, I, I actually didn't find out why you fill them with... Oh, God, with alcohol. I thought I could climb over, but uh, I couldn't. So it looks like they actually want me to be digging this way. Oh god, I have to be so careful with these damn shells. It's terrifying. Yes, where we actually left off was um, Emil here was captured by the Germans, but then the British attacked, and now... Ooh, some bratwurst. And some... Um, whatever those are called. Not Wiener Schnitzel, that's another meat. What the heck are those round things called? Those pretzel looking things. Are you serious? Yeah! Minutes earlier on the other side of the front. Yeah, stuff isn't going great. Continued their attack on Neuve Chapelle. Their next objective take back Port Arthur. <laughs> that guy's going nuts up there. Wow, look at this team. We've got this American volunteer and all these... Uh, I don't know if they're Gurkhas, but these... Uh... Oh, God. Get behind cover! All these lads from um, India, anyway. Or the colonies there around. It's just... He's taking a sweet time to reload. Now move, move, move! Yeah, if you didn't pick up, it's World War One, by the way. <laughs> I think we went through that last time pretty well. Okay, barbed wire. We'll get on it. Oh! Oh, gee. I wasted my time punching the air. That's a really rough timer on that. Let's try again. Don't worry, lads. I got this. Oh, crap. Move, move, move! They've almost got me pinned! Actually, let's take cover for a second. I just realized that's what these things are for. Alright, he's exhausted. Okay, need to set up the TNT, eh? Here comes the boom! It's never that easy now, is it? Wait, sorry, what? What are. 232. Two. Oh! Oh, that's the uh, thickness of the explosive that he needs. Right on. Don't worry, Mr. Possibly Gurkha. I'm sorry to my viewers from the Indian subcontinent. I'm not... I'm not that familiar with um, the local um, military units. I think they used a different term for the... Let's see now. The Garwal Rifles, that's the word that they used. And presumably, since this is happening in Neuve Chapelle and um, Neuve Chapelle, and um, they've been featured here, these guys are the Garwals, they are not Gurkhas. Unless the Garwals are a type of Gurkha, again, I'm not. I'm not super knowledgeable on that. Please write in and tell me where I'm being mistaken. Don't worry. <laughs> really? That was the wrong type? Okay, hold on. There we go. 
You wanna come down from there? Okay, good. Yeah. Jeez. Here we go, baby. Now here comes the boom! Haha, <laughs> how you like me now? Oh, that opened up a convenient way to sneak upwards. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, one of the Garwell's knives, I believe. A, um... What are these called? The Kukri. The Kukuri? Okay. No, I think... A, is a Kukri what these things are called? Anyway, the Kukuri knife was used by the Gurkhas, the British unit comprised of colonial Indian troops. This Nepalese weapon was standard issue and became a symbol of the Empire forces. Its heavy, thick and curved blade was designed for striking as well as cutting. Oh, sorry, I was thinking of the Kopesh, because I was like, what's that... I thought a kukri was that thing that they used in, like, um, Egypt and the Middle East. No, 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 that, that's a kopesh. I'm confusing it with the kukri. There we go. Pardon me for my little skip there. I had something come up. Anyway, let's carry on. So now we are in this German cannon bunker. Oh, no! Walt and Emil. Oh, that's the situation we just saw a second ago. So that's why it said a few minutes ago. Oh god, oh god, oh god, okay. Fire! Oh, thank goodness for a second I thought I caught Emil in the blast. <laughs> that was a really sharp timer, by the way. There was really only time for one shot there. The thing was almost on them. That was a little scary. Oh, I'm playing as a... Right, okay. Don't worry, Walt. We'll get you out of trouble. Let's go get some bratwurst. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I guess I could help you too, <laughs> Emil. <laughs> You're a free man. Again. Yo, that's cool, they're gonna team up and find Carl. Amidst the never-ending attacks and counter-attacks, Freddy and Emil hunted the elusive Baron and his... Although I don't know if you can have just walk off like that, like what Freddy's doing. Emil, it's a little iffy. He's, um... He's, uh, you know, a POW. He's kind of not part of the... I don't know how the regulation works, but he's really... You can't really blame the guy for kind of wandering off on his own right now. Freddy was a part of the unit a second ago. He can't just go adventuring, but I guess he can. Well, here we are in Ypres, in 1915. I believe this is the first or the second battle of Ypres going on in 1915? I don't know. Ugh. Damn, I remember that being like a thing that happened later in the war, but... 1915, that's like... pretty early in the action. Oh boy. Well, I'm not sending Walt in there. I was thinking I'd maybe save that guy, but... Maybe, maybe, Walt, can you avoid the... Thankfully, it's a lighter than air, apparently? I don't know if that's true. We got cool facts here. We do have cool facts. The Battle of Ypres, which was a town in Belgium, was very important. That's why there were crazy huge fights. Uh, Passchendaele was also in Ypres. 6,000 Canadian lives were lost in the battle in April. Oh my god. That's like 200 people per day. Holy crap. Yes, indeed. The gas attack. Look at this. This, this crazy, like, old school gas protection. This isn't gonna help really much, is it? Oh no, I guess it is. The only defense found by the Canadians was to cover their noses with a urine-soaked handkerchief, which I guess is what that is. Which is pretty disgusting, but... you know... <laughs> you don't want to breathe that shit in, you don't want to burn your lungs. I mean, it's gonna burn everything else, because it's awful, but... That's what you gotta do, you gotta do! I believe the idea is that the urine reacts with the chlorine in the gas to create some sort of inert compound, which is... not so deadly. Oh yes, and if you wondered why Zeppelins are called what they are, they were invented by a guy called Graf von Zeppelin. Mm-hmm. Right, they weren't actually much lower than the aircraft of the period, so they were actually useful for a while. Oh, my god, they were actually used to bomb London and Paris? Interesting. 
horrible but interesting. And of course, the dogs of war, literally, in this case. Yeah, the dogs... I wonder how long dogs have been used. I mean, man's best friend has been man's best friend for ages. I wonder how long they've been used in war. Huh. But, uh, right. Um, anyway, that's enough history for that moment. Yes. Look at this. This is gruesome. Oh, yes. Um, oh, new diary entries for these guys. What a day. My life was saved twice today. First by an American soldier, and then by a dog. But I'm free at last. I saw Carl before the bombing. I hope he made it out alive. I'm going to try to find him. And then let's see what Freddy's got to say about this. On the march to Belgium where this damn regiment is stationed. I'm not alone at least. I met a funny old French farmer guy, Emile. Doesn't say much. But if I understood right, his son-in-law's German. How crazy is that? Not a day goes by that I don't dream of you. Wow. Mm, got someone someone on your mind there, Freddy, eh? At last I found Emil just moments before the shells started flying. I hope he's managed to dodge the bombs. The letter he showed me filled my heart with joy. Marie is well and Victor is growing up. That's all that matters. Well, Carol's keeping his chin up even though his predicament is awful he's fighting the country that he really really was connected to that's really messed up today the germans invaded san miel fortunately the troops spared the farm i took shelter in the cellar with victor now what's going to happen oh that's actually way earlier it's still in 19 these are not on the same day curious yeah oh well anyway let's deal with this guess Ah, there's something to dig right here. Hold on, guys. Oh! Oh, I see. There's a gas pipe right there. That's a problem. Did they use weird gas pipes to do this stuff? Come on. Oh! Yes, we can lower it through. Very good. Now let's see if it catches the box. It does. And Before we go, there's this obvious treasure to get here. This appears to be... Some kind of ID tag, a dog tag, if you will. DMCD Haynes, 21st Burn Infantry Canadians. At the start of the war, Canadian identification tags were formed by a large al aluminium, excuse me, it's, uh, it's Canada, not the state, so it's aluminium disc, which was because they were an emergency issue and had a unique shape. They were soon replaced by standard British tags, as were those of all British Empire forces. Yeah, it's kind of an awkward thing. I don't know how big it is. It's kind of hard to tell in this cartoony game, but that's kind of an awkward tag to carry around, a big round thing. Any case. Walt, you're coming down here. We're going for a ride. You have to go down without me. Um, oh, no, wait a second. Oh, that's right. No, this is... Okay, now this is one of those puzzles I talked about last episode. Where we need to actually have Walt switch around and... Walt switch around and carry me around on these switches. So we need to do a lot of back and forth. Which always messes with my mind. Good thing Walt is smart enough to throw these switches. Beautiful. Okay, now this looks like a puzzle if I ever saw one. Yeah, so I'm... I can say with fairly good confidence that this is just a cartoony device right here this is not uh, this is not what they used to um, used to uh, <laughs> pump chlorine gas in real world war one although I, I guess I wouldn't be surprised if um, they did have like some sort of furnace using to spread the gas out like I'm imagining like gas canisters but again it's a hundred years ago I don't know how they did that stuff Oh, this must be one of those uh, handkerchiefs, a urine-soaked cloth. The only defense against the gas attack, before masks were introduced, was to cover the nose with a urine-soaked handkerchief. Urine reacts with chlorine directly in the handkerchief to form less noxious products, limiting the effects. It was not the most hygienic solution, 
but it was always better than a lung full of hydrochloric acid. Oh my god, yes, HCl, that's like, that's like the one that has like pH content of like one, so that will, that will burn through your lungs basically, and kill you. I guess that's kind of the point, isn't it? Okay, we need to do something about this machine right here. This cartoony machine actually brought up something I wanted to mention, which is the animation style in this game. And this 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 animation style is super European. Um, let's see. Let's turn it another notch. Huh. I'm not sure what the goal here is. Walt, can you flip that real quick, see what happens? Aha, so we want to mess with this to get it to align in a weird way, kind of like this. No, now it's... Oh, we, need to, we want to cause a back feed, I see. So we want to get that bottom one turned around a little bit more. Okay, good. Walt, get on that. So yeah, this game to me... Okay, now it's red. Oh god, the pressure's mounting! It, it This really feels like a European animation thing. Like, um, I, I think... I mean, not to stereotype countries and their animations, because the one thing you always go to is, like, Japanese animation, a.k.a. anime, being, like, really spastic and, like, really crazy and loud and, and garish and stuff. And, like, obviously not... A, you can't stereotype, but that's, like, kind of, like, the impression you often get is, like that style being like that. And then American animation, you know, to me, always makes me think of like anarchic, anarchistic, like a kind of like um, uh, plays against the rules. Um, Europe, Europe kind of, again, not to stereotype, Europe does not have uh, one specific animation used in all, all across, but uh, I, the, the stereotype or like the common trend like i feel in a lot of european animation is uh that it is very um whimsical whimsical is the word i use like when you look at stuff like um the three ladies of oh god i should have looked up the name of this this french animation of like these three three dames of whatever the place name is um it's like this very whimsical style and the thing is that there's this Kind of an anarchy of its own in, um, and I'm speaking of anarchistic, an anarchy of its own in like European animation is dealing with really serious topics with this like kind of whimsy to it. Like this is a World War One story, and it's not a happy one by any stretch. But there's this, this like kind of whimsy is the only whimsy is the really only word I can think of. Like there's like cuteness to this all, and like there's is like comedy to it. For sure. Oh, wait a second. No, wait. And I'm doing it wrong. Or am I doing it wrong? Oh, no. I can pull it. I thought I had to be on the other side. Okay. So, this is like really Ubisoft. This definitely is a European-made production to me. Or if it's not actually... I haven't really researched. But if it is not a European-made, it really has that style to it. Um, of the kind of animation done in uh, European shows okay there we go now we've knocked that pipe back into place so hopefully this will cause the back feed oh god i should probably get out of all right never mind now fortunately instead of flooding the chamber with uh, gases it just kind of shuts down and emil is a little beat up but fine for was there something on the ground i saw a litter no? No, oh, it's just a dust cloud was confusing me. That's, that, that's like, not, not, not stereotypes, but what, what, when you think of, when you think of certain, like, region or country's animation, um, uh, it's like, Japanese, you think of, like, um, really, like, action-packed, really bright stuff, um, in, in, in in America, I think it's like playing against the rules, like non-conformal, like anarchistic. And um, in, in European, that's what I, that's what comes to my mind from European animation is um, serious topics dealt with the, like this um, odd odd humor is how I'd put it, which you see here in this story. 
Again, as we will see as we carry on. Anyway, a letter from a Canadian soldier. Oh god, I haven't practiced my... Okay. Dear parents, we are in Belgium, a truly flat land that reminds me of our Winnipeg Plains. The big difference is that it's so damp here, which makes the cold even colder. The guys and I are gonna make you proud of us, see? The Canadians will be the big heroes of this war. I'll write again soon, Steven. I just realized that is incredibly offensive of me because that was an actual real life letter. I'm so sorry, friends. <laughs> oh boy. I can't help myself when there's like an opportunity to make a funny voice. I, that That's my, again, <laughs> going with the fr European animation, doing like silly, uh, taking whimsy for the serious situation. No, but to the family and, um, to the family and uh, friends of Steven here, who this real letter is based on. Um, well, we don't know. We don't know if Steven survived the war or not. It's, this letter doesn't say. It's from the beginning of the war. Hopefully, Steven survived the war. But my, my apologies to the Steven estate. <laughs> anyway. Man, I really have to really practice my Canadian accent, speaking of. That... I, that was a little bit off. Um, what is that up in the sky? Speaking of zeppelins... Let's uh, not stop, okay, guys? Okay, you carry on top, Freddy. We'll take cover in this nice, safe mine. Why did not you not just come this way, Freddy? Oh, dear. Oh, dear me. Damn, should have gone... Should have gone underground, baby. Oh, they're dropping gas from those... Oh my god. That, is that even an option? I guess it is an option. Anyway, let's admire the Shako. The Belgian army's distinctive Shako resembled a top hat with a rim replaced by a visor. The Shako was replaced by the Isère cap, a soft cap with flaps that could be pulled down over the ears. The cap was called the Isère because Belgian soldiers massed behind the river Isère to hold off the German advance. Ooh, that is a cool hat. But, no chance to use it. What am I going to do with this bucket? Oh, I think I know. Let's build a walt Vader. Get in there, Walt. Popper goes up. Okay, Walt. Um, why don't you... Okay. Thought it was going to throw that to me the bone but actually you can just lower the rope ladder okay okay sorry 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 uh freddy I, I wonder if there's a timer on this scene should i be like hassling okay freddy i got it i can use this bone as a switch that's not weird at all thank you my friend you Don't worry. oh i like the like barely intelligible dialogue i think it's cute good work freddy now let's boogie and get this treasure while we're at it. This looks like a pocket watch? What do you mean time is off the essence? I got time right here. It's uh, almost 12. Time was an important factor in soldiers' lives and military strategies for attacks and rolling barrages were based on tight chronological synchronicity. Pocket watches were the only way to tell the time. S speaking of time, oh my god, there's a there are gas shells right here. Ah, ah! Oh no! Oh, I hope that can ventilate some of the gas. Oh jeez. I'm actually got Agita right now. Stop, stop walking like that, crazy Emil. Who the hell? Thank you kindly, madam. Her name was Anna, a Belgian student living in Paris. She was hard on the trail of her missing father. For once, fate smiled on them. They were all going in the same direction. Well, that's useful. But while approaching Vimy, a German... <gasps> Manfred von Richthofen! Sacre bleu! We have a driving segment! And we get, um... I should know the name of this song. I'm... I forget which one it's called, though. Someone write in and tell me what the song's called. Mon Dieu! 
Those aren't even biplanes, were they? That looked like a... That looked like a single-wing aircraft. Let's get up. Now, that is a single-wing aircraft. My god, some sort of high-tech... Ooh! They almost got me! Oh! Fortunately, we have, like, uh... We can take a couple of hits. Because this car is sturdy. Oh, no! I should have been paying attention, but I was staring at the Zeppelin. Cards are almost busted. We can't take another shot, or we are dead, Zos. <gasps> what? What? Mines! Sacre bleu! You know what this reminds me of? Suddenly, I just felt like. I mean, it isn't really, but. I suddenly got flashbacks to the motorcycle scene from. Um, from Final Fantasy VII. I don't know, I guess it's just because Freddy reminds me of Barrett, so we're, and the way we're all piled into this car. But also just the fact that we have like this driving mini game in the middle of a game which is not at all like that. Oh jeez, am I far enough to the right side? I am! Oh! Oh! That's Von Dorf's flat! Oh no. Well, shit. This car's totaled. Oh, oh, thank goodness you have a first aid kit on you. Damn, we need to find some help. First. That guy's looking this way. Okay, presumably he will shoot the shit out of me if I go climbing that way. So let's not go that way. Let's... Huh? He's down? Nope. Oh dear. That guy is looking this way intently. Ah, but he wouldn't shoot a German dog. That guy would never do that. Good work, Walt. Now this is a tricky part. Let's see if I can tag that. I'm gonna have to let that guy do his waltz there for a second. What was that noise? Hmm, sandbag is gone, that's weird. I better report this. Alright, now we can carry on. Thankfully, this one was breakable down. Oh man, we are behind enemy lines. I just realized, look how close all of these uh, Germans are. And they are being super casual up there. Which means we're not like, we're like deep in their territory. Um, I see. Well, seems we have a sneaking mission. 